During the World War II, when the Nazi Germany was preparing to attack Paris with its V2 missile to reverse the course of the war, no one on earth knew that instead of changing the war, they would actually be changing the limits of humans, as their technology will be helping us to send satellites, telescopes, space station, rovers, cars, and even ourselves far away from Earth, thus opening the doors for space exploration. So in this video, we will tell you how Hitler's weapon of vengeance introduced humans to a world far beyond their known one. Stay tuned till the end of the video as an interesting question is waiting for you. Developed by the Nazi Germany to attack the Allied cities, the V-2 rocket was the world's first long-range guided ballistic missile which was powered by a liquid propellant rocket engine. With a length of 14 meters and a diameter of 1.65 meters, the rocket weighed about 12,500 kilograms and could carry a warhead of 1,000 kilograms at a speed of 5,760 km per hour, which is approximately five times the speed of sound. This astonishing speed was achieved by the supersonic aerodynamics and the turbo pump of the rocket, which rotated at 4000 rpm to pump alcohol and oxygen into the combustion chamber at 33 gallons per second, which were then ignited to produce a thrust of 25 tons. This combination of speed and thrust gave V2 so much power that on an impact, it could create a crater 20 meters wide and 8 meters deep and could eject approximately 3000 tons of material into the air. So in order to use its great power on the correct target, a new automatic guidance system was developed which included gyroscopes, four external rudders and an onboard analog computer that controlled gyros and rudders to the programmed destination. This technologically advanced rocket was designed by Werner von Braun and was built by the prisoners of the concentration camp. During the war, these V2s were fired on Belgium, France, United Kingdom, Netherlands and on Germany itself to destroy their bridge which was captured by the American soldiers. But we all know that in 1945 when the war ended, Germany was on its knees. So the US and Soviet Union saw this as a great opportunity to grab their hands on the remaining V2s. The US was able to capture 300 rail cars loaded with parts of V2s along with 126 of the principal designers, including Wehner von Braun, who all decided to surrender to the US military. While USSR captured several key V2 rocket production facilities and also gained the services of some German scientists and engineers related to the project. Both the countries performed multiple experiments using V2s to develop various missiles and rockets. Like the United States used the V2s guidance system to develop the Atlas and Minuteman guidance system as well as the Navy's inertial navigation system. By collaborating with the civilian scientists, they did many experiments in which devices were sent into the air to determine levels of atmospheric pressure, cosmic radiation, type of gases in the atmosphere and taking the first photo of Earth from space. The US Navy also performed an experiment in which they tried to launch a V-2 rocket from an aircraft carrier, which was a partial success. Also, the first American ballistic missile PGM-11 Redstone was a direct descendant of the German V-2 rocket. While USA was advancing itself with the German technology, the USSR was not lagging behind. After capturing a number of V-2s with its staff, a group of German scientists supported USSR in making their own replica of V-2, which was named R-1. They also built another missile R-2, which was an improved version of the V-2 missile, and also the last Soviet missile based on German designs. The R-2 rocket was used for many space experiments that carried dogs, monkeys, hamsters, and various high-altitude physics experiments in its nose cone. Later, the missiles were further developed to make R-5 and the world's first intercontinental ballistic missile R-7. But the details of Soviet achievements were unknown to the German team and underestimated by the Western intelligence when they launched the world's first artificial satellite Sputnik 1 by the Sputnik rocket, which was based on the designs of the R-7 missile. This is how a weapon of destruction started the era of space exploration. And even today, the fundamental technology of launches remains the same as it did 75 years ago. Modern rockets still use gyroscopic guidance and most are powered by liquid fuel, which were the pioneering technologies of the V2s. And they have helped humans to study a world beyond their Earth, to step on completely different places, send robots to other planets, build more advanced rockets that can make a round trip and lots more. Now, as promised, 
it's time for you to answer a simple question. But before that, we would like to congratulate our viewers who gave the correct answer to the question in our previous video, which was the sun. Now the question for today is, who was the first female astronaut to venture to space? Type your answer in the comments and the winner's name will be featured in our next video. And please don't google for the answer. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up and if you are new here then don't forget to subscribe to our channel. Also follow us on Instagram and Facebook.